Sooner or later, any piece of hardware becomes obsolete, and combat vehicles are no exception. With the arrival of new weapons, better armor, and more sophisticated technologies, all vehicles inevitably come to a point where they have to be phased out. With that said, some of them remain in service for many decades, sometimes despite the fact that they had a fair share of flaws when they were first introduced. Today, we're going to talk about those long-lasting veterans, vehicles that can still kick some serious butt despite their age. Let's start with second-generation MBTs, tanks created in the middle of the Cold War, when MBTs finally became a staple of modern warfare. In the West, one of the most iconic designs was the M60 MBT, accepted into service in 1959. During the following years, American engineers did a stellar job ironing out the kinks and solving teething problems of the design, creating a truly reliable, versatile vehicle. Not surprisingly, the M60 was pretty popular abroad. It remains in service in several countries even today. In War Thunder, we have one of the modern variants of the classic vehicle, the Turkish take on the classic M60 created by Standard Bio. It is equipped with a 120mm gun, an advanced day-night vision system, and a computerized fire control system. Another interesting guest from the past is the British Chieftain MBT, often considered to be one of the most well-protected tanks of its generation. It was armed with a glorious 120mm cannon, and engineers equipped one of the variants of the tank with a Stilbrew armor package, one of the first upgrade packages of this type. Today, the Chieftain is no longer used by the Royal Armoured Corps, but this legendary MBT still remains in service in Iran. If we start talking about early MBTs, we simply have to mention the T-64A, a true veteran of the Soviet armor. During the 1960s, the USSR was making hundreds and hundreds of T-64s. The A variant was the one that had both a 125mm smoothbore gun with an autoloader and a very reliable multi-layered armor offering good protection against AT missiles. Tanks of this series were also the basis of countless combat vehicles, and many of those are still in service all over the world. Now let's talk about the progenitors of modern MBTs. Vehicles that rolled off the factory floor before MBTs were even a thing. The first tank we have to mention here is obviously the British Centurion. It's a highly versatile tank with good armor, maneuverability, and gun. All in all, a dream come true for many armored corps around the world. It's interesting that the British initially didn't expect it to have much potential for modernization, and almost immediately started to work on its replacement. <laughs> in the end, though, the tank had a very long service life. Leyland Motors and Royal Ordnance Factory fitted it with an excellent new gun and gave it better armor, allowing the Centurion to outlive most of its replacements. Even now, almost 80 years later, some Centurions are still out there ready for combat. For example, the South African National Defense Force employs a heavily modernized variant of the Centurion as the Oliphant. Another tank that is just as iconic as the British Centurion is one of its rivals, the legendary T-54. A team of engineers from several design bureaus, led by Alexander Morozov, created a vehicle with massive potential. To put it simply, the T-54 had both the armor and the firepower of a heavy tank, 
and the mobility and the weight of a medium tank. After its introduction in 1947, this beast of a tank saw heavy use in the countries of the Soviet bloc. A version of the T-54, known as Type 59, is still employed by the People's Republic of China. Obviously, it's not just MBTs that served for decades. For example, the Soviet BMP-1 IFV has been in service since 1966. It's still pretty mobile, even by modern standards and its armor still offers good protection against small arms fire and shell fragments. Having received significant upgrades time and time again, the BMP-1 and the BMP-2 series are still forces to be reckoned with, even on a modern battlefield. Just take a look at the BMP-2M, with the Pirashok complex and bleeding-edge ATGMs that is available in War Thunder as a squadron vehicle. Finally, we simply have to mention the PT-76, a Soviet amphibious tank that's been in active service since 1951. Designing amphibious vehicles is very tricky, but Soviet engineers were definitely up to the challenge. Even though performance-wise, the PT-76 was obviously very much behind the times by the end of the century, there still aren't that many vehicles that can replace it, and they're all IFVs. As a result, this antique amphibious tank is still actively used by quite a few African countries. Two other vehicles boasting an extremely long service life were both introduced at the start of World War II. We're obviously talking about the Soviet T-34 and the American Sherman. Two teams of talented engineers, thousands of kilometers apart, created literal marvels of technology. Vehicles that were both very effective and easy to produce. These tanks entered service early in the war and remained in use till the very end of the century, before finally going into their well-earned retirement. Each of those vehicles was made to last, proving once again that it's not the most expensive and sophisticated pieces of machinery that wins wars, but hundreds of reliable, time-tested vehicles operated by experienced crews. The T-54, the T-64A, the M-60 and other vehicles on our list are all proof of that. What long-serving vehicles have we missed? Do you like to use these oldies but goodies in War Thunder? Please tell us in the comments below. It's your answers that inspire us to write about them.